Hi, good afternoon. So can I start by asking you to introduce yourself, please? Yes, Chris. Uh, my name is Ioannis Savas Pantelidis. I'm a past chair for the Council for Hospitality Management and Education, uh, which is a body that uh, represents a number of UK-based universities that uh, have hospitality uh, curriculum. I'm also director of doctoral studies for the University of Brighton. I'm an ex-hotelier, restauranteur, always a hospitaler. Fantastic. Well, I think we'll have a good conversation. Um, so I suppose we're talking about leadership. Um, how do you view the importance of leadership, firstly? How have you? Have, well, the importance of leader, leader, leadership is uh, undisputed. I mean, I can't imagine a world without it. Uh, I guess the question is, what is leadership? Rather, because people confuse people confuse management with leadership, and and um, you know, for me, it's all about those few unique individuals who manage to inspire change. Um, in a way that almost feels it's, it's your, it was your decision to begin with. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I I wouldn't be able to do what I do if I didn't have inspiring leaders in my life. Often, my biggest frustrations is when I have the opposite. I have managers rather than inspirational leaders. I mean, I'll take a bullet for an inspirational leader any day of the any time of the day. Well, look, that leads me beautifully to my next question. Who's been a real role model for you? Who's inspired you in your life? Uh, you mean like the big leaders or generally? Yeah, well, both. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, for me, the, the work that, I mean, you, you don't have to look far. I mean, Mahatma Gandhi and, and how he, uh, he did what he did. I, mean, if you, I enjoyed reading about his story, life story, and, and how he did it is the important thing as well. And also why he did it. You know, he wasn't really looking to be a leader. He was just doing the right thing. And he happened to be the right person at the right time. And you know, that's if you're looking for a, for, for a big name from uh, historical names. But in, in terms of uh, more recently, I mean, more recently we had uh, hospitality has been in a very, very difficult uh, situation with the pandemic. And I think... There has been a, a number of, of inspirational leaders that have sort of popped up. Um, for me, a, a great one is Lorraine Copps from Be Inclusive Hospitality. She's another one who's at the, the right person at the right time. You know, we, we need to talk more about diversity and inclusivity uh, in our industry. And she, she's leading the way. Um, and there is also, of course, Kate Nichols. You know, she, she is really... She was a mouthpiece uh, for for the industry. Still, is she's done she's done a lot. So I think we we're at a good point of evolution, uh, and I think we need more and more uh, good le leaders to emerge. Okay. Now you've always had very strong values. We've known each other some time. You've always had very strong values. Where what instilled the values into you? Um, I, I guess the thing is I. I don't see myself as a leader. I, I see myself as a facilitator. And I think the values that I follow have come a lot from, from people who I thought were bad leaders, mostly. I mean, I'm inspired by great leaders, but, but, but looking at bad leaders, I, you know, red tape sort of managers who think are leaders and they are doing the things they do because they want to be called leaders um, have actually taught me what not to do and when not to do it, and how not to do it. So my values, I guess at the core of my values is, is I've always have done everything I've done because I'm thinking about people. You know, I, I grew up in, in a service industry. I, I grew up in a family of hoteliers and restaurateurs, services in our, in our blood, <laughs> and, and everything I've done. I mean, I, I call myself an accidental academic. I never thought I'd become an academic and do a PhD, but still, you know, what I love uh, in, in my day-to-day -day work is working with people, working with my students, working with my PhD students, undergrads. And, and that's what really makes a difference to my, to my life. So that has been the core value. How can I help these people? And, and by doing that, I feel they're helping me more than I help them uh, because I try to find solutions. Um, I try to facilitate learning, including business learning, 
uh, we've we've done a project where we try to bring um, industry leaders and academic leaders closer together. And I think our heart is in the right place. And, and that's, I guess there must be a saying which says that you know, being, being a nice person is nice for business. Well, business. <laughs> it's deeper than that with you, isn't it? Because you have a real passion to help students, don't you? And Not just talent. students. I mean, I, I hope this is why a lot of the stuff I do, I've got, I've got too many, too many, my hand in too many pies. I try to help business people as well. I mean, predominantly hospitality focused business people. Um, I, I, I feel I don't know, I have an affinity towards it. I still feel I'm a hotelier or a restaurateur, but also students, of course. And the two merge. You know, we effectively we are a supplier uh, to business. So you know, we produce great talent. And I think it's not about when they leave the doors. I think it's um, you also have to be a good mentor, not to all of them, to those who choose to to to, um, to communicate with you after they've graduated. Um, and I'm lucky to say I've got a lot of friends over the years, a lot of good friends, uh, who are now becoming inspiring leaders themselves. So, yeah, that's <laughs> lovely. I mean, you, you might have uh, seen the one of the uh, young Acorn Award winners, Rachel. Uh, yeah, she uh, one of, of my star students. Oh, Very proud right. of her. Yeah, quite right. Too. Um, can you tell me about an experience you happened in your life which has influenced you particularly? In, in terms of leader, leadership, always. Yeah. yeah, in terms of your thinking about your thinking about other pe about people, about leadership, about the role you have. Yeah. You may, you may not see yourself as a leader, but you are a leader, aren't you? I represent a lot of people and I try to help. But as I said, I call myself a <laughs> leader. I think, I think if I ever said, call myself a leader, I, I have this fear that I will do the wrong things for the wrong reasons. So I, I'd rather not call. Um, I like to call myself a storyteller. <laughs> I tell stories to people and hopefully they learn from them. Um, but I guess, I mean, I know this is repetitive now, but I think the pandemic has been a point of reference for all of us. I think our generation will always talk about how it changed social constructs. And for me, particularly, that I have so much love for hospitality, how it, it really brought hospitality to a point of evolution. And I'm looking forward to the future now. You know, it's it's what I say to people who say to me, "Oh, I had a bad day." And I'm, but if you didn't have a bad day, you wouldn't know what a good day is, right? So all this time, uh, you know, we didn't have parliamentary debates about hospitality. We didn't have uh, young people getting more involved and speaking out. Uh, we didn't have women, people of uh, ethnic minority, speaking out. Now we do. Why? because bad thing happened. Something really bad happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and through that bad thing, I think we all found some energy and keep on pushing. And I think, I think that's another, you know, tenacity is another, I guess, value and attribute that I think good leaders should have. Keep on pushing. So you're positive about the future? I'm very positive about the future. I mean, because <laughs> we're here talking, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, this is amazing. The fact, uh, you know, yes, yesterday I was teaching in a classroom and I saw live people again. It was brilliant. Um, I'm, I'm very positive about the future in general, but I'm also even more positive about the future of the industry. I care so much about hospitality because I think I really, really believe, and I've been saying this long before we had this great debates happening. I, I believe we're at an evolutionary uh, point. And I think you know, maybe in 10 to 20 years when people look back and see how culture has changed in this country and how this particular industry is perceived, they'll, they'll point back to around this time and they'll say, you know, it was just after COVID when it was brought to its knees that it got up and it walked again and then it ran <laughs> and it keeps on running. Uh, I really believe that. Uh, we have a choice. So here got the really interesting ones on you. What do you advise your 18-year-old self? Oh, gosh, prob uh, <laughs> uh, quite a few things, I guess. Uh, one thing would be don't worry too much. <laughs> I would still advise me that um, 
don't chase too many rabbits. <laughs> and this morning I took uh, well, my good pal Wolfie out and he started chasing all these rabbits very early in the morning. And, and you know, he just reminded me of me. I, I, I go for too many things, for too many goals from a young age. And then I get, you know, anxiety kicks in. I haven't achieved enough. But, you know, we forget to look back. Our progress is incremental. So, you know, focus on a, on a goal. Do that, Yanis, and then move on to the next goal. That's the advice I give my 18-year-old self, and I'll still give it today because I don't listen to my own advice. I'm great at giving it to others. Um, I wish I would listen to me a little bit more sometimes. Funny, isn't it? It's funny. And what's been your greatest learning? If you had to think about one learning, particularly during that period, what's one piece of learning you think you had? I think it, it has been the same learning that I had during times of personal crisis. You know, this was a social, major social crisis. To some of us, it was a very personal crisis. We lost people we love. But, you know, when you have a personal crisis, it will either break you or if you make it, you find yourself that little bit stronger and you, you find that you had energy that you never tapped into before. And then, you know, somebody can say, oh, but now your heart is broken. And no, I say your heart is stronger. Yeah. Because sometimes broken things emerge stronger. So I think, you know, as a, as a community, as individuals, I think uh, I, look, I look at the positives, which is we are stronger. We are better. And how many people are trying to make a huge difference? We've never heard so many debates going on. We've never heard so many actions. We've never had so many reports. We've never had so much research. We never had so much interest from the media, from government, from the opposition. <laughs> you name it. I mean, if I don't look at it positive, uh, I'd be a fool. No, I get that. Well, look, can I thank you for your time? That's absolutely superb. I thank All you right. for coming today. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm guessing you can cut it there. Uh, is that what you were looking for?